We almost got it. Now it's getting interesting because we are now programming the float algorithm. So we let letting things float like this woods and um, these swimming things in the water and of course the boat. The boat physics will explained in the last tutorial, but now we're letting things float. One thing I want to mention, uh, which I changed from the last tutorial, and this is the UV scale. Uh, now the water looks a little bit better. Um, this is the basement we will working on today. So uh, we will remember where the water is. Say pause. 3D object cube and we will place a cube here um, make it a little bit bigger in this way and in this way so we want to let it float the position is ah, quite okay let's place it here and we will add a widget body to it the box collider lighter looks quite right. And the next thing we need is a water float script. And there are so many solutions how you can actually do it. And um, I made up my own. It's a combination of many solutions. I will specify four or more points on this object. And these are the floating points. So we will start detecting where these floating points are and we will rotate and position our cube. Okay, let's start uh, with public variables. And these are the floating points, public and the water and the air drag. So what we will do now is let things float. And in my first tutorial of my Physics 101 series, I explained how all the widget body things are playing together and they are already explained what air drag and water drag can be used or how air drag and water drag can be used to create some kind of a floating effect. I will put you a link down in the description or in the info box so that you can get a deep understanding of physics. Okay, let's add some protected members and here we go. Uh, we will get the rigid body and the waves. So these are two objects that we uh, catch right away on a wake. So the waves is one object in our scene that represents the waves. This is the script we wrote in the first tutorial. The witch body is already attached to it. We do not use gravity because we want to make our own gravity rules. And we want to compute this waterline, waterline points, center of offset, center offset and center. So waterline points are basically our float points we will assign to our game object. And uh, these are the points on the water. I will show it to you in a second. And the a center offset is physics helper get center. So you basically pass point in this physics helper and it tells you where the center is minus transform position. So the physics helper uh, it's just a class um, that I published as a gist, so you can basically copy and paste it. So you can also find it uh, on GitHub in the GitHub repository of this project, uh, which I published. So you can just um, copy and paste it. Gen Center, it's very easy. It just takes all the points and um, calculates the average. And if we have the center object, we can easily access its center. Okay, it's all hard to explain, so I will draw some gizmos. These are just for visualization. You can just skip them if you want to. So I just just created this method. I say, okay, as the float points are not set, I will return. And I will go through all of the float points. And if the waves are attached, this is basically in play mode. Um, I will draw a red cube for every waterline point and a sphere for every float point and if the application is playing a cube for the waterline variable. Okay, back in the editor, uh, I set the size to 4 and just 
back and drop these here. So there we go, save. And let's see, so the gravity uh, should disappear. Yes, everything seems to be fine. No errors, and here we go. We already got our uh, float points, so as cubes and green dots. And here is the center as this red dot. So I think we got it all. Um, so just remember these are the floor points and we will see what will happen on update. Okay, speaking of update, um, let's paste some code here. Okay, we want to compute the waterline. This is the thing we want to compute and we want to um, know if one of our floating points is under the water. So therefore we compute a new waterline. So we go through all of our points and the first thing that we do is we set the waterline point, which is basically a representation of our float points, um, to our float points. Then the only difference between the waterline point and the float points are that this y variable is set to the height of the waves. So remember in the first tutorial we uh, wrote this method called get height and we pass a position and we um, receive the y value, so the height of the wave in the current state. And yeah, that's it. The new waterline is uh, basically the weighted average or basically the average. We add up all the waterline points y's, uh, y's so every height value and divided by the float point length. So, and if any of the float points are below the waterline points, one point is underwater. So we set it to two. Um, we can just calculate the delta. We will need this later on, but let's save this and see what happened. Now things get more clear. So you now know what wave points and um, waterline points are. So the green points are the float points. They are static and they are here and they stay here. And the red dots are the waterline points. This is really the waterline. And here the red one um, is the waterline. So this seems to float already, but the thing isn't moving. So now we can use this as a reference point, the center, and move this whole thing up and down. Okay, here we go. Um, now we add gravity. And these are all the lines of code we need. So basically first we specify the gravity as the gravity and the drag as the air drag. Imagine we are above the water and everything is normal. And this is how you apply gravity. If you turned it off in the rigid body and you want to do it by hand, you just say rigid body at force gravity times, just ignore it, we will delete it. So this is how you uh, apply gravity. And now imagine we are underwater. This means the center is under the water line. We will use a different drag. We will use the water drag. So, and now I have the white code. Um, we set the gravity to minus gravity. So we basically flip the gravity and we translate the transform with the water line delta because otherwise it would move too slow. But we can start it with this one. And there we go, it already starts to float. It's a little bit slow and it doesn't really go with the waves by adding this one. So, and here we go. And one thing or one problem we have is if we are really close to the surface, uh, it starts to jitter because it's always switching between um, the air and the water mode. To smooth this out, we will add the factor again and this is the absolute distance between the waterline and the center. And this is the linear factor we will multiply with the gravity. So this is always between one and zero. So everything is a little bit smoother. Another thing that we will add is um, a new variable called attach to surface. And here we will really attach the rigid body to the first surface as soon as the waterline is reached. We can use it later on for our boat um, because we do not want to um, have the boat under the water at all. So we, we really force the widget body position to the water surface. 
And for all the other things, we can use this one where it really goes up and down. Okay, there we go. So, um, it seems correct from the standpoint of the height, but now the rotation is missing and this is the last part we, that we will do. So let's go up um, to this help vectors. We will create two new variables, a smooth vector rotation. We will come to that in a minute and a target up. And the target up is always pointing up as the name said, but it's not the up vector directly, it's the up vector dependent on the waves. So uh, we have to set it here and then do the rotation. Okay, let's do this. We use the physics helper, you get them uh, pass in a bunch of points and you will get out a normal. Um, this is mathematically a little bit more complex because you will calculate the de determination of these points. Um, in the comments of the code there is a link, you can read it there, but you do not really have to understand it. You can just say, okay, give me the normal of those points if they build up a plane and everything is fine. And we want to rotate as soon as one point is underwater. And then we uh, will smooth damp. And this will slowly transform the current up vector to the target up vector. And therefore we need this um, variable. We just pass it through every iteration. And it just um, holds the information that is needed for the next loop. And this is the speed of how fast will this transform up become the target up. And um, if we have that, we can actually do the rotation. So from the transform up to target up times the old rotation builds up the new rotation. So to make it visible, in our scene, I draw this ray and you can see this ray is always perpendicular to the water surface and uh, the rotation is always oriented on this normal. So you see, um, it's already going with the waves and uh, this is what it looks like in a wireframe mode. You can see it a little bit better there. Um, it's really rotating and these floating points always try to follow this water surface point and the normal is always pointing in the direction the whole thing should rotate to. Yeah, that's basically it. It's pretty simple, straightforward. And in the last episode, we will finish this project by adding a boat. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.